all, Kelly Nagel here, co-founder of the Team Think Tank Project and your host of Here's the Problem podcast. I recently had the pleasure of sitting down with the amazing Essence Carson. She is a WNBA veteran. She has an NCAA championship title to her credit, as well as a WNBA championship. Not only is she an amazing basketball player, but she is a passionate social justice advocate and human rights activist. And we had the most amazing and inspiring conversation about social justice in sports, particularly the WNBA, and her experience and her passion fighting for racial equality. Really excited for you to hear and hopefully be as uplifted as I was. Take a listen. Essence, thanks for joining me this morning. Really great to have you. It was good to be here. Thanks for having me. So here's the problem. Sports and social justice. And just saying that phrase conjures up a diverse array of reactions, some positive, some really negative. And it's become a more divisive topic, certainly over the last four to five years. And so what I'm really digging into is deeper into that conversation, really excited to have your perspective as someone who's personally involved with it, been touched by it, um, to kind of sift through all the rhetoric and understand uh, where we are. And then ultimately, where do we go from here? We have a problem. You know, what, what's the solution? So really excited to, to talk to you a little bit more about this today. This year's WNBA season was certainly unique for a lot of reasons, you know, pandemic aside, but in the sense of the league fully embraced social justice and, and social protest movements that really made you stand out from other organizations. Um, and I'd love to talk about, you know, how you got to this point, what has been the history of sports and social justice when it comes to the WNBA? Why is this year so unique? And then where are we going? So those are like three questions and one that we'll dissect over the next hour. But would love to hear from you. How did we get here? What, what did this look like before we got to, to 2020? Oh, wow. Whew. Before we got to 2020 in terms of the, the league, the WNBA, um, you always had uh, individuals stand on the front lines. Um, but what you were able to see this year was the entire league, league-wide, um, everyone was on the front lines in terms of social justice. In past years, there were many causes that many, you know, players held close to their hearts, dear to their hearts, and they, they definitely stood up for what they believed in. So when I'm thinking back to the reaction to, to those specific players. It wasn't necessarily a lack of support. In some instances, I think it was a little fear involved, fear of what you might lose, mm. um, especially when a league like ours, we're continually go- growing. Um, we're much younger than our counterpart, the NBA. So we're, we're still building a lot of things. We have a lot of room for growth, especially when you think financially. And when you think like a corporation, you don't really want to risk those sponsorships Mm -hmm. um, and and that support viewership because you never know what others may believe in. And to take a stance that oftentimes becomes politicized, it's it's, it's hard to actually stand on those front lines, stand up and and champion a lot of of those things. But what we're facing isn't a political issue. It's, it's more of a civil rights, human rights issue, and I think that this year it was it, it was there. So it, what I'm saying is that sometimes you do have to to do something. You have to retreat, right? Mm. Um, and and that that slight uh, minimization allows you to really expand your your power in a more explosive fashion. And you're able to propel faster, even further. I mean, Mm -hmm. uh, propel forward um, even further. Um, 
So I, I liken that to the sacrifice where you may have to lose something in order to gain something. And mm-hmm. you have to understand that, you know, as much as we would love to, and in the business that we're in, it, the, the, the framework is kind of like, you can't have it all. We'll give you just enough, but you can't have it all. But what I can say is that it seems to be, well, at least in our case, it seems to to look seem, um, look like things are things are changing mm. in a sense where this isn't the fundamental right of breathing clean air, having access to fresh water, access to fresh produce. That isn't a privilege, right? That shouldn't the that, basic that, human right. It should just be basic humor. So now we're, we're ch- kind of changing the landscape of how people view just, just you know, everyday things. Mm. And us, uh, us um, you know, that, that slight change in thought then removes that from the sense of it being a privilege to this is, like you said, this is, these are your basic rights. And when you, when organizations, when leadership, recognizes that and acknowledges those things as basic human rights not just you know it's not specifically bound to those those things that i just mentioned but there's a plethora of things when you look at those as basic human rights it you lose that sentiment of you can't have everything Mm. because to me you say that when you feel like you're 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 allowing me to have a privilege when again, we're talking about basic human rights. And now since all the, that scheme, that way of thinking is changing, you can, you can definitely see that there's change happening across the board. It may not happen as quickly as you would like to see in, in other sports, but it definitely is changing. And I want to thank, continuously thank those players that are willing to, to sacrifice yeah. their jobs. Right. Just Mm -hmm. imagine having, you know, a nine to five and you just decide that, hey, look, I'm going to take a stand today. And if my boss doesn't like it and I lose my job, um, you know, I'm sacrificing supporting my family. It doesn't matter if you make one dollar, if you make one million dollars. These people are still taking care of their families. This is their livelihood. This is how they put their food on the table, no matter where they are on that on that uh, on that spectrum. Um, the principle is the same. So the more we continue to sacrifice or be willing to sacrifice, you know, we have to start with the, you know, just, are you willing to sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Because then that in itself will act as another motivating factor for you to stand up. You may not have to sacrifice anything, but you never know if you never try. And I think, so I think for a long time, people were afraid of the idea of losing something Mm. it was the idea of these things that didn't allow players to to exercise their freedom of speech as much as they could have but now we're tearing down the constructs of the fear of that idea Mm -hmm. and now people are more willing to sacrifice or be willing to sacrifice and i mean Shoot, uh, like I said, the, the women that sat out this season, they were willing to to sacrifice it all because you know we don't make you know as much money as our counterparts. We have mm-hmm. to work year round, work twelve months. There's no yeah. summer vacation. <laughs> There's no winter vacation. Just to you know whether it's here or playing abroad, just to supplement you know that that missing income during the year, just to. Just that to be willing to lose all of that. 2020 seemed like we were we're peeling back multiple layers at one time. Yes, and, and I love you bringing us even just 12 years from from 2008 till now, and the changes you've seen both personally and, and through the league. And I think that's a huge statement to say in 12 years it's become acceptable. I mean, it's sad, but you are at a point where where you can openly talk about these wrongs and, and the impact that it has to you personally and on, on so many other people in the league. Um, that's a statement. 
And I, I knew I was going to have such a riveting and thought provoking conversation with you. Um, I'm so thrilled that I've also been filled with so much hope for the process that that has unfolded in the history of sports and social justice, even in your 12 years experience in the league, but that we are seeing impact and that there's momentum into the future. And, and like you said, we're peeling the layers back in 2020. What does that look like in 2021 and 2022, where, where there's more conversation, there's more knowledge. So thank you. I am, I feel very hopeful as, as we're ending um, our, our conversation together and just so much gratitude for, for your honesty and, and your candor and everything that you're doing to put a voice to not only racial injustice, um, but also social protest in general and, and what you're helping to do with the league to, to move that forward. It's, it's amazing. You are an amazing role model. And I, I can't wait to, to have conversations with you in the future about all the other progress that that we've made and, and where this is going from one fellow human rights advocate um, to another. So thank you. You have my gratitude and, and all of my support uh, and really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me this morning. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity um, to, to use this platform as a that's another way to inform people to to hopefully light a fire. Um, you know, that's what it's about. The more the more uh, youth that you can inspire, um, the better our future uh, seems to to could could be. Um, you know, they I was I was taught that when I was um, you know a young kid, and I, I really feel that as I live my life and as I continuously move forward, that that hope that was instilled in me as a child really kept those wheels turning, kept that pilot lit mm. in me all these years. Um, so it's only right that I champion that and then I pass that on to the next generation um, because just like those that came before me, um, not only were they fighting for for themselves, they were fighting for the next generation and a generation after that. Without them, I wouldn't be here. So it's only it's it's my it's my civic duty to do the same thing. Um, and hopefully, we have a lot more people that will join the party. And <laughs> and at the end of this thing, man, we can have a big we can have a great a huge celebration together, um, celebrating um, the victory over this long, long, long standing battle with racism, colorism, and so forth. Perfect, inspiring words to end this on. Thank you <laughs> so much, Essence, for, for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'd also like to thank all those who made this podcast possible. Our wonderful production team, the George Milton Group, Winnie the Move for our theme song, and again, my Team Think Tank Project co-founder, Matthew DeSantis. Most importantly, I'd like to thank you, the listener. And hey, let us know you're listening. Subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And follow us at problem underscore pod. For more information on today's topic or to find out more about social justice programming for exceptional teens, please follow the Think Tank at team underscore think tank or visit us at teenthinktankproject.com. Until next week, I'm Kelly Nagel.